Hi, it's Mrs. Cox with this week's art video. Um, I'll share my screen and then I'll show you what we're going to be doing today. Okay, so our art today, we're going to be looking at how artists use sketchbooks. And we're going to start with someone who's possibly the most famous artist in the world and produced one of the most famous artworks. And that is this gentleman called Leonardo da Vinci. And he was painting many, many years ago before there were any cameras in the world. So there were no photographs. And his art was so detailed and so beautiful that it looked real and people um, couldn't believe how talented and how clever his artwork was. And this is a uh, what we call a self-portrait. So it's a painting he made of himself. He looks um, he looks quite old fashioned because it was hundreds of years ago. And this is a very famous painting he painted called The Last Supper. And it's a Christian painting and you've got Jesus in the middle and his disciples and all the food. And I think people were just amazed at the detail he put into his painting and also the light. So just using paints, he managed to bring the scene to life and make it look really real. And this is his most famous painting of all. And I think you could say it's possibly the most famous painting in the world. It's called the Mona Lisa. She's a mysterious woman. We don't know who she is, but she's famous partly because of the detail. Look at the way he uses light and shadow to bring that picture to life. And partly because of that mysterious smile. And for hundreds of years, people have wondered, who is she? And why has she got that little faint smile? So that's the Mona Lisa. But Leonardo da Vinci is also famous for his sketches. Now sketching, is the word for drawing, usually just with a pencil, or it could be a pen or charcoal, um, a black and white drawing that you do um, often as a first go at drawing something. And in school we have sketchbooks and we really want you to get better at sketching. So these are some of Leonardo da Vinci's military sketches and I don't think um, I don't think these were ever made because he sketched lots of designs and inventions that were never made but people look at them now and go wow he was such a good designer and such an amazing engineer and then these are just some art sketchbooks and you can see here he's drawn in massive detail um, what we call the anatomy, the muscles and bones that are under the skin. And by doing this, he'll have got better at doing his paintings of people and making them more realistic. And here we can see a sketch that he's done of some flowers. So he was a really talented artist and these are his sketches. But I wanted to show you a more up-to-date artist and the way he uses his sketches. So Alex Scheffler is really famous artist and he's illustrated a lot of Julia Donaldson's books, including the Gruffalo, which I'm sure you all know. And he does a sketchbook and you can see here, these are some of the original sketches for the Gruffalo. And they're very basic, they're just a few lines and it's almost like he's playing with his pencil and just you know, going, will this work? Will that work? Um, so these are the original drawings that turned into the Gruffalo book. And I love this one because this is a page from a more recent sketchbook and he's um, trying to design these little stick people and he's put them in a bed covered with leaves. And then he's just written a note to himself. Well, maybe they should just sleep on the floor. So again, you get this sense that this is not a finished artwork. It's just playing. And it doesn't matter if he gets it right first time, he just has a go and then he might tweak it and it will get better and better and more like the final thing. Um, we're gonna do some sketches 
and we're going to look at a really interesting project that someone's done in lockdown so they've got lots of people to photograph the view from their window and some of these are amazing views um, I'll show you the view from my window in a minute it's not as exciting as this um, but this is somebody looking out they're looking out over their roofs and the roofs of the city and they can see a mountain I think it might be Rio de Janeiro that might be a very famous statue on the top but I'm not sure but it is is an amazing um, view and here um, so somebody's made a book of views from people's windows in lockdown and again this is a very lovely one it looks a bit maybe a bit rainforesty and they've got mountains in the background uh, this might be Venice we've got canals and beautiful old-fashioned buildings um, this one is, this is Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. So again, you've got very luscious plants and a lot of sunshine. Um, this is Brazil again, but it's in the city. So you've got the tower blocks and the fast motorway. But interestingly, look at this, there's no cars on the motorway because of lockdown at that point. Um, and this is a more um, ordinary view out of a window. And this is someone who, when they look out of their window, what they see is their balcony with their washing on. And I really like that because that feels like that's very much somebody's um, real life every day, what they see out of their window. Um, before we look at my window, I just wanted to talk a very little bit about people who are good at art and people who think they're not good at art. So when I was at primary school, I quite liked, well, I loved reading and I liked history and I liked science and I liked maths. Um, I did not like art or PE because I thought I was rubbish at them. And I looked around and I could see other people who could draw really well and other people who could run really well. And I wasn't very good at those things at all. And for years and years, I just thought I'm a bit rubbish at those things. And I didn't really try. And then when I was a grown up, I actually found out that I really like um, getting exercise and I really like drawing and um, uh, and having a go at art. Um, and I do, some of you will know, I do a lot of um, baking and I love doing designs and drawing for my baking. And I feel a bit sad really that when I was at school, I didn't just give it a go because actually the people who are good at art are probably the people who've done a lot of it. And the people that are good at sport are probably the people that enjoy it. So they do more of it and they get better and better at it. And we really believe that everybody can get better at sport and they can certainly get better at art. So I want to show you a few tips for when you look out of your window, what might help you be um, happier with your drawing in the end. Um, let's have a look. So this is the view from one of my windows and it's quite a boring view, but it's my view, so I'm quite fond of it. So what you can see is a little corner of a garden with a couple of trees, which are, have got no leaves on them at all, a bit of grass down here. And then you've got a garage, a garage. This is a bit of a kitchen roof. And this is um, uh, the, the, the house at the back. So out of this window that I'm looking at at the moment, all I can see is roofs and you think, well, that's quite boring. But actually, it's really good fun to draw because it's got so many lines in it. Now, when you come to do your drawing, you can just look out of the window and draw what you see and enjoy it. But if you want to get your drawing a little bit more accurate, then you could look out of your window and think, where are the big lines what are the shapes i can see so much of drawing is just about looking carefully at the shape so if i look here i've got loads of lines to play with and the first thing i might do i wouldn't do them in red this is just so you can see them is put in these big roof lines so i've got my sheet of paper i'm looking at my view and i'll try and make sure that these lines are big at the top and these lines are big at the bottom i'm not drawing in a tiny 
tiny corner of my sheet of paper. I'm trying to use the whole sheet of paper and put the lines in the right place. And then I might add these lines and already I've got a shape that looks very like the view from my window, just putting those big main lines in. Then I can add some more lines and then I can start thinking about texture. So I get my big shapes first and then you can see here on this day, it's just snowed a little bit. So there's a little bit of snow on the tiles which makes them stand out. And I can see that here I've got horizontal lines going across the roof and here the lines are coming down the roof. Um, this on the side of the garage is called Pebble Dash and it's little tiny stones stuck on so I could do some little dots for that. Um, I've got lines for my garage door and maybe um, I could experiment with the rough texture for the grass and I'll show you that on the next video my go and then you can have a go. So your challenges, the easy one is just to look out the window, have a go, draw what you see. If you want a little bit more of a challenge, try and experiment with different ways of adding texture so that you might try a little bit of brick or um, some paving stones or some leaves or trees. So adding a bit of detail. And if you want to really go for the red challenge, try and use the big lines in the picture to get the shapes right before adding detail. Hope you enjoy this one. It is one, it's a very cold day here in Manchester at the moment. So this is one you can do um, looking out of your window, but it will get you away from the screen. And who knows, maybe you'll find that you're an even more talented artist than you thought.